golden jets, I like more than sex But nothing in this world, I need more than checks Money. All I really wanna see is the Money. I don't really need to be any the Money. All I back need is the Money. I got pants in the Y'all, that song get me so lit, y'all. I be in the car like, money. <laughs> oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you guys for being here. I'm going to sit down because I'm like so lit right now. My name is Ashley of SingleWomanChronicles.com, where being single is a beautiful choice rather than a miserable circumstance. Y'all know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Hand clap of praise. All right, tonight we have some wonderful, wonderful guests, and I'm excited. The topic for the evening is how to keep a man from destroying your self-worth. Ladies, if you're like me, you've been there before. Um, even if it started young. For me, it started with my father. Not having a father destroy my self-worth. But even then, you still have to keep a man from destroying your self-worth. It shouldn't be attached to anything, right? So tonight we're going to just be talking about some real dialogue, some weir real ways to keep anyone, not even men. When I say men, I, I really think man, I really, yeah, I really mean mankind, <laughs> like any human entity from destroying your self-worth. So I am very excited. I hope you guys are excited. Feel free, like I said earlier, for those who were not here, we have the Na fam and we have the preach. So if somebody in here preaching, y'all gotta be like, preach. Don't be afraid to like wiggle it when they really preaching, you know what I mean? And then we have the Nah fam, because some people, they be like, man, you don't know what you're talking about, Nah fam. And then we'll give you guys a chance to speak, because I don't want it to be all about us. I want you guys to interact, I want your questions, I want you guys really to get something out of this. So y'all ready to get started? Yeah. All right, so let's bring our lovely, lovely guest out. Round of applause for them. <laughs> welcome, you guys. Welcome. Can I get their mic? It's always all awkward when everyone's like silent. Y'all need to whisper or something. <laughs> all right, everybody, introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Pam Ricardo. I'm from Atlanta, born in Brooklyn, but from Atlanta. I'm an actress, personal trainer, and a few other things, and I'm happy to be here tonight. Good evening, I am Shinobi Morgan. I'm from Pompano Beach, Florida. Been here about three years. I am a motivational speaker and an author, and that's it. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> What's up, everybody? My name is John Wood. I am a poet. I'm a spoken word artist from Atlanta. Uh, happy to be on the panel tonight representing for the guys. It look like we got some sense. Um, I'm excited. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Okay, I want to jump right in. Every time I do a topic, I like to research what the meaning of that is. So when you think of self-worth, it's such... It's so like overrated. I think a lot of people just say it all the time. You need to get your worth. You need to get your self-worth up. But no one really explains like what it means. And so I Googled it like, what does worth mean? And worth means value. Like, what's your value? So for me, I always got to bring it around. Give me some type of metaphor. What is that? So compare it to a product. If you were to put a price tag on yourself, what would that price tag look like? I'm not gonna say name or price because that's kind of like, eh, I don't wanna do that. But are you a clearance item? Are you a Walmart value item? Are you like Macy's? Are you like Gucci? Are you like Fendi? You know what I mean? And the crazy thing about it is all of these products, they're all made cheap. The only difference is our perception of these things. It takes like $20, if that much, to, <laughs> thank you for my first preach. <laughs> it takes like $20 to make a Jordan shoe. But people out here killing each other for J's because of the perception of the shoe. So when you think about that kind of thing, what, what do you guys think about when, it, when you think about worth? Like what do you think about when you say, what does it mean to have high self-worth? Or to have self-worth at all? You can start, you got the mic. I was, hoping that would, I was hoping that wouldn't happen. But um, so I think it's just uh, 
what you place your value in. Um, if it is something based on, I think the perception thing has a lot to do with it as well. Um, but what do you what do you place your value in? So like, you know, as me personally, like I put a lot of value in who God has called me to be. So it's like, you can't really step on that. Like, you know, you know, cause that's who I am. And so uh, I think that's 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 the first tier of I think value. Where do, where do you put it? You know. So when I think of self worth, I, I think of of me evolving. Mm. When I look in the mirror, how do I see myself? And based off of how I see myself, dictates how other people treat me. Yeah. And that doesn't mean falling in love all over me and being obsessed with me, but this this notion of respect, how I carry myself, and that that's how I look at work. Um, I think it's a requirement for everybody to to establish this sense of work. <laughs> well, y'all done said everything I was thinking about saying. <laughs> but yeah, like to go back to what you were saying, I totally agree. Like how God sees me, that's between me and God. And so I walk in this world every day knowing that I know who I am. That's my self-worth. No one's going to tell me who Pam is. Mm -hmm. And once you establish that with yourself, no one can tell you otherwise. And they have to abide by that or they're not going to be in your life. You make those rules. No one makes them for, no one makes that rule for you. You make your rules. So. so this is about keeping mankind really from destroying your self-worth. So what do you where do you think people go wrong when it comes to them having their self-worth depleted? Because I always say self-worth is like a bank account, right? So if you're constantly giving yourself to people, right? Like you're constantly spending and you're constantly being beaten down, beaten down, you're emptying in your bank account. If you don't go to work and be by yourself and learn how to replenish that self-worth, you're gonna be empty. It's like a bank account. So what, where do you think people go wrong when it comes to self-worth? Like, how do they lose it? Well, I feel like they lose it when they put their value in someone else or allow that person to make them feel like that's, that's everything. You're my everything. I, am, I give myself over to you. I spend my day thinking only of you. And you forget that you have goals. You have things to do every day. You need to go to the gym. You need to study. You have things to do. So when you meet someone new, work on being whole first. Because if you go to them and you need to be full or be filled up, you're looking to be disappointed. You know? So it's almost like um, you having a water bottle. And it's Everybody that you meet, you pour into, you pour into, you pour into, you pour into. And then it's like when you get around that person that's not appreciating your worth and not valuing you because you don't value yourself, you are pouring into them, but who pours into you? <laughs> and so with self-worth, it, it's, it's almost like a light switch that goes off to say, as I pour into you, somebody's going to be pouring into me. If not, you got to go. Right. You, you just pour <laughs> Yeah, that, I think that, that covers it all. It comes down to that circle. It really does come around to your circle. And I think as we get older, we start to protect ourselves a lot more with who we surround ourselves with. And um, I think the unfortunate thing is that we're very conscious of that when it comes to friendship, right? Like, we're very like, oh, no, nah, she not it. You know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? We, we, real, we real cool when it comes to the friendship, but when it comes to relationships, we tend to tolerate a that, lot. That boy more. over there preaching, y'all playing to games. He over there more. preaching. <laughs> like it take take a, like a couple of people got to tell us, hey, like you not the same. Where that they not it, you know. So um, I think that's that's it comes down to that circle. Like you have friends that you know you pour into, but you got to have people that can pour into you, and like it should be the same thing over and over again. So it comes down to that circle. He, he preaching right there. He said a word right there. Son of a, brother John right, right now. <laughs> so I always talk about it uh, because, you know, not having my father, I grew up feeling worthless. So it's harder when you start behind the finish line, right? So how do you recognize that your self-worth has been depleted when no one's telling you? Let's be honest. I grew up in a household with, although my dad wasn't there. My mom could have been there to fill that up, but she wasn't. She was emotionally distant because she grew up in a household where she didn't have it. So I didn't feel, no, no one told me I love you. My mom didn't hug me until I was like 25. Like it's crazy. I experienced that. And I didn't realize how worthless I felt until I started dating. 
and I started having these friendships that were horrible and I was dealing with all this stuff. I remember having a friend who would constantly do me wrong and I would always be like, oh, that's just her. Y'all had those moments. <laughs> oh, that's just hard. Like, no, you have to set boundaries because it's not fair. And especially in those relationships, that's why I know all too well, like, the difference. So the signs for me were I was tolerating things that shouldn't be tolerated. I felt like I was constantly trying to prove myself to people. Like, constantly, like, oh, my God, I have to dress this way to do this. Or, oh, putting too much on my physical appearance. Like, putting way too much on it. Like, oh, if I do this, they're going to accept me. Or, if I do this, she's going to hang out with me or he's going to love me. You know what I mean? So, what are the signs that people feel worthless and they don't even realize it? <laughs> I don't know how you keep it up right. Okay, so, uh... <laughs> um... Not that people, feel, okay, that's a good question. Um, I think a lot of it, one of the first things I think I noticed is um, like the way people kind of project like what, your, what you did. Like it's a lot of like, well, you meant to do this and you did that. I'm like, no, that's not, that's not what it is. It's a, almost an exaggeration of where you are. You can tell like that they, people don't have a lot of grace for themselves, mm -hmm. they can't like forgive people. It's a lot of these, when you, and I think that's why it comes out a lot in relationships, right? Because there's a lot of forgiveness. There's a lot of understanding. There's a lot of grace you have to give people. There's a lot of like selflessness that you have to give people. And so it's like when you notice that people don't have that in themselves, when they really can't give it to you. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's why it comes out in the relationships instantly. You can, yeah. you can see it so quick, you're like, oh, okay, I see what's going on. Yeah. And, that's, and that's, you know, and that's where it gets funny, right? You're like, okay, do I work with this person? Do I stay? Do we, do we figure it out together? Am I going to, you know, or do I'm just like, I don't really know if I can deal with that. Like, you know, where are we here? So, yeah. yeah. That was good. That was good. I think you, you'll tolerate things that you know you wouldn't tolerate if you know your self-worth is low. Um, people that I find are in relationships that aren't healthy, a lot of times the person that they're with, or maybe it's them, they come from a family where, like you were saying, they didn't get that love. So they come to you like, you gotta be my end all be all. You better love me up. Mm -hmm. Or they need something from you. Like they're used to their mom taking care of them. What, the woman, now you're the new mom, you know? Or mm -hmm. daddy issues, or whatever the case may be. People feel, <laughs> people feel like their partner has to be that void. And that's not fair in relationships. You can't come into it half, you know what I mean? You need to be whole, like I said earlier. So I think I find that in a lot of young women, unfortunately, because mm -hmm. we're just like looking at social media and we're so comparing ourselves to everybody's, you know, amazing day, but we're not seeing who they really are. So I think, you know, honestly, self-worth, it has to stem to what we said the first time around, you have to just love you. So if you're looking Amen. for that in anyone else, you're, you're not going to find it. So I find the low self-esteem comes from you never had self-worth in the first place, you know? Preach it, sister. Yeah, self-worth and just spending that time alone. I, I, I shine so much light on spending time alone. For example, um, I didn't grow up in a household with my father. My parents were married, they got divorced. Hey dad. Um, <laughs> they got divorced when I was younger, so I grew up with this strong woman, right? That taught me how to live without a man, yeah. but never taught me how to live with a man. And so, of course, it was a domino effect into my relationships. I attract, you attract what you are. Yeah, yes. If you're dysfunction, you attract dysfunction. Yeah. If you accept anything, then you'll get somebody the same way. Yeah. So spend time alone. My perception had to change though, mm -hmm. because yeah, my father, I didn't grow up in this nuclear household, but how long could I blame the fact that my parents got divorced of my shortcomings in life? And so it got to a time where when I spent time alone, I built a relationship with God, and then he moved dysfunctional people out of my life, and I was able to build a relationship with my father. And so how long, how long do you sit around and talk about the things that you never had? And that's what we do. She we over here wish, preaching, y'all. We wish, we wish for the things that we know. How can you wish for things that you never had? Mm -hmm. Who says that a nuclear household is better? Yeah. No, spend time that's alone. That's real. And, and God, God will mend those relationships that we blame was never there. He'll mend it like where now my father's in the in 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 audience supporting you. Mm. Something that, you know what I'm saying? If I was still been stuck, yeah. I couldn't appreciate that. Mm. 
Right. I want to go back um, to what John said about uh, people who basically don't extend grace. A lot of the times we build up those walls and we call it, oh, that's just how I am. No, that's not good. You're not supposed to be like that. Like you, you, you can't be that defensive because you may miss something or someone who you need. And that could be a friendship, that could be a business partnership, that could be a relationship. And I used to be like that. Like, I'm queen cut people off. I, I do it for a living. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, 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 block, best feature. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. <laughs> I, I block people without thinking about it. And it's just honestly now that I'm realizing that that's not fair especially not telling them or informing them of why you're blocking them because it's okay not everyone belongs in your life some people do need to get cut off quick but not everybody some people you can talk it out because it's just a misunderstanding y'all y'all perspective could just be off it's just off so when you're doing that there's something going on within you because you're blocking everyone out because you're like oh i'm gonna oh they're gonna cut them off before they hurt me Uh uh-uh honey ain't got time and you're really missing something because that's real growth and maturity when you're able to let those walls down so yeah i love this panel because everybody got god in their life i just love it so much because you never know you know what i mean and we we are in a society right now where not everyone believes and that's okay but it's great that everyone's answer had God in it so I just want to know how God has helped you build your self-worth oh, yeah. <laughs> all right so I think the biggest thing is about is finding out who God says you are right that's really what it is like as like a Christian as a believer like the Bible literally teaches that we were created for God, for him, and by him. I was created for him, not for anybody else, mm-hmm. right? So my whole life, everything that, that's positioned is for him, not for anybody. So once I understand that, and I'm everything who he says I am because I was created for him, yeah. right? Then it doesn't matter what anybody, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. Like, even if I'm not that today, like, God still says, that's who I am. So that's who I am, and I'm going to walk in that. And so I feel like we all have to get to that point of, you know, getting in, getting, having time with God, because it is a relationship, so it's going to be based on the time, right? It's based Amen. on the time that you spend. And so, and then let him inform me of who I am. So, I like that. <laughs> so um, I, I moved here three years ago, and I was lost. I grew up in the church, of course, and knowing all the scriptures and all of this great stuff, but I didn't know how God, how much God really loved me. I never really knew. I knew it because cause sometimes we can say certain scriptures, but we don't really believe it. Yes, for sure. And so I, for sure. I, I knew who God was. I talked to him. I prayed with him out of routine, but I didn't know how he really felt about me until, until I had to leave a cycle. Uh, being in dysfunctional relationships, yes. being sexually still attached to dysfunctional people. Yes. And when I left Florida and moved to Atlanta, God showed me, listen, I need you to detach yourself from this, this thing that you created as your new source mm. that can't feed you. Uh-huh. I'm going to detach because what we do is we stay connected to yeah. the things that's familiar and comfortable. But when you snatch away mm-hmm. the things that... Mm-hmm. That's our everything. It's like, all right, God, like my knees buckling now. Like I need you. Right. And when Amen. I moved here, he showed me, listen, I don't care if you, I don't care if you're full of anxiety, you're full of fear, you, you're suicide. I don't care what it is. Yeah. I'll show you that you can be messed up and I'll meet you right where you are. Oh, girl, you better. And I'll give you opportunity. I'll give you something to live for and something to wake up to. So, yeah, like he showed me that, like, Shinobi, you dope. Like, I, I love you. Yeah. Uh, you got the juice, so yeah. That's what God had to show me. Like, you're that girl, and you're that girl without those dysfunctional things attached to you. Right. So, that's what he showed me. And, and you are that's dope, beautiful. girl. Yes, that's you beautiful. are. Um, I feel like, you know, this life's just been such a journey. I can only thank God because I feel like I'm on this, like, amazing journey. I don't know if you guys have ever read, like, The Alchemist or, or seen The Alchemist or whatever, but 
it's about the journey and everybody you meet and every lesson. You just got to be willing to learn the lessons. Mm -hmm. I think I had to go through some lessons like 77 times <laughs> before I was like, oh, that's what you want me to learn. So, you know, the knowledge and wisdom I've gotten over the years of just like going through the same thing, cycles like you were saying, and just realizing, oh, this is a cycle. I, I, I attract this all the time mm -hmm. in a different face or a different body because I haven't learned yet. I haven't learned my lesson. Yeah. So God's just brought me through so much. I mean, I come from the same kind of background. Mm -hmm. Dad was just, mm, me and mom wasn't, you know, tight mm -hmm. at all. So I didn't have, like, the ideal man or woman in my life to look up to right. or to have as an example of, like, that's what I'm going to be like. So I had to be the best me that I knew to be just mm -hmm. by walking and waking up every single day and figuring it out as I go, mm -hmm. trial and error, you know. Mm -hmm. And so just having God in my life, I just... I'm learning to trust him more and more every day. I'm not perfect. But what I'm also learning is that, you know, he's made me go through stuff so I can teach people later on. Mm -hmm. Your testimony is like the best thing you have. Yeah. Don't be afraid of it. You know what I mean? Because I help so many young women now, and I didn't know that that was what God put me, allowed me to go through. I might have put myself in a lot of that stuff. But he allowed <laughs> me to go through it, and he got me through it, you know? So I, I, I'm just thankful that I can be in places like this and speak to people about my experiences because you don't know why you are why you went through these terrible things. Mm -hmm. You're here to help someone else down the line. That's all we're here to do. So that's really why I love that. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Beautiful. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Prepare preacher. Yes, yes. Um, mine was the same. Uh, mine went a little deeper. God helped me heal. I actually did not grow up in church. I I always knew God existed because he always spoke to me. He saved my life once, and I knew it was nothing but him because of the way it happened. I'm like, yeah, that ain't nothing but God. And so I, I always heard him speak to me, but I never had that relationship. So I came out of a horrible relationship. It's crazy how it takes that, that thing, that horrible, horrible thing that it's like, okay, I ain't got time for this. I can't keep doing this. So I was at my worst. Like, I felt... I was a completely different person. I gained weight. I, kind of, I was into it with all my friends. Like, it was really bad. I didn't even recognize myself. Like, that person that brought out the worst in you, like, that was the person I was with. And so I knew I couldn't take it anymore, and I kept praising, praying, and I'm like, God, please get me out of this relationship. He like, I'm waiting on you. So one day I got courage, and I left. And finally when I left, I... I sat on my, no, I was on my knees crying and praying every single day for a month straight. Could not hear God's voice because he's like, I abandoned, you abandoned me, I abandoned you. You gonna, you gonna work for this. <laughs> so I'm like, nope, I'm not getting up to you, bless me. I'm not doing it. So finally, he started speaking to me again. I started getting that connection again. And finally, he started revealing to me some stuff I needed to heal. So the things with my dad that I was connected to, he started healing that. The things with my mom I was connected to, he started healing that. All of that rejection I went through. Because a lot of the times our worth is taken away from us because it's connected to rejection. Every time we get rejected, we feel like, oh my God, something's wrong with me. What's wrong with me? Why am I not good enough? Like, I know you as an actress, it's like, why am I not good enough? Or, or even you guys, like, as, as a poet, as a speaker, it's like, you don't get that job or that gig you wanted. It's like, oh, I'm not good enough. And no, like you said, if you, if you are made by God and you are made for God, you are chosen which means he chose you, he created you. You didn't have to be here. The reason you're breathing right now is because he's allowing it to happen. So that means you have a purpose. So that means that you're here for a reason and you need to live that out and be worth it like the shirt that I'm wearing right now. <laughs> so another question I have is, what do you do on those times where you feel yourself slipping? You feel yourself, oh my God, my worth, I don't know, it's dwindling. I don't really know. I ain't feeling confident today. I'm not feeling it. On those days, what do you guys do? Well, on those days, it's crazy, but I'll sometimes go back to my social media and read comments because a lot of people say things to me that I might need to hear that day because you never know who you touch by the things you say, and I don't really post things without saying something under the picture. So a lot of times I don't even realize. I'm thinking I'm just getting something off my chest, but really I'm helping somebody else too. So I might look at that or, you know, God's so amazing. He knows when I'm down because he always sends somebody my way to lift me up. It could be a complete stranger. And they'll say something encouraging to me. And it kind of brings me right back to, girl, who are you? You know who you are. What you was thinking? You know what I mean? <laughs> Get back right, Pam. So I think for me, it's just me. Um, I always ask. I'm going to ask. I ask. Yeah. I'm just 
like, God, if you have this for me, I know I'm going to say this like twice a week. You're probably sick of me. Like, girl, I, I told you <laughs> you were an actress, okay? But no, um, you know, you say the same thing to him all the time. Like, am I supposed to be doing this? Am I supposed to be around this person? Am I supposed to be, you know, where do you, where you want me to be? And he answers, I can't even lie. I've, I've gotten used to hearing him, and he speaks to me through people. And like I said, my Instagram or my whatever, my social media, my emails, something will happen that day that lets me know, like, you got this. Amen. So three things for me, I reflect a lot. Mm. I reflect a lot. I remember my old pastor said, it, if the enemy tried to, should have took anything, he should have took my mind or my memory. Because I remember where God brought me from. So mm. when I do get down, it's like, yo, I'm, I'm dope. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so that's one thing. Another thing I do, I learned from somebody, is daily affirmations. Oh, so yeah, that's really I write good. on my mirror, I write certain things, or like I write in my journal, but just to write it on my wrist. Every day when I'm at work and I'm reading it, like, Shinobi, you got this. Just keep going. I also seen this meme one time on social media, and it said, are you going to cry? Or are you going to get up and keep going? First off, I'm going to do both. Yes. And so <laughs> being aware of your feelings, Absolutely. being Absolutely. aware of your feelings help you move forward. Like, yes. if I'm down one day, I need to know feelings aren't facts, but sometimes I need to sit back and evaluate why am I allowing the same thing to get me off track? Right. So I evaluate those feelings, too, because I feel fear today. But all right, tomorrow, I'm not going to be feeling fear again. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I like that. That's good. Using your emotions is like just to see where you are as a gauge, you know, because I definitely don't really believe in living like an emotionally led life. I'm doing everything out of emotion. You know, but I, I do think it's a good indicator sometimes of where you are. Like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm over here. You know, I need to fix that. I need to figure that out. Um, but one big thing I do, I disconnect. I'll just disconnect. Like, a lot of, I deal with a lot of just like, like we talked about comparison on social media. I deal with that a lot as an artist. And I know that even I deal with that just, just period. And it just penetrates my life, you know, in different ways. And so I know, like, okay, I need to disconnect. Okay, I need to go and spend some time with God. Like, sometimes that is just, I've actually done, like, the, the falling on the face, like, prayer thing. I do that. I try to do that, like, every couple of weeks. It's just good. You know, it is. Like, it's just good. Like, especially as a man, like, you know, I'm not about to be calling my home. Man, you know. You know she hurt my feelings, you know. Uh, so, I mean, but I do feel like, you know, you do have to have people to talk to, people that are in your corner. So my biggest thing is disconnecting and finding, you know, knowing who those people are, who you can talk to, you know, who you can just be like, hey, bro, I'm really dealing with this or blah, 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 you know, whatever it is. I think those, that's why we keep the right people around us, you know, like, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that, too. Um, I like to assess where my worth is, like, each time, like, okay, so if, is, is this just an emotion, or is this a worth issue? Like, are you dealing with something that you shouldn't be dealing with? Like, what you, what's wrong with you? And I think a long time is very important. That's why even for my blog, you know, my message for women is enjoy that alone time. Like, really embrace it, because so many things can be done in that alone time. And not just physical things. Emotional things, mental things, like getting over those humps that you couldn't get over if you're with somebody. It's so much harder to heal when you're with somebody. Healing should happen when you're by yourself. No one should have to pour into you because you're actually tearing the relationship apart when you go in, when you need something. Wounds will happen within the relationship, but don't bring all that baggage in there. And it's okay to not be ready. And so sometimes I tell myself, like, uh, you may not be ready. Maybe you need to, like you said, disconnect. Maybe you need to pull it back. Um, I always have my one scripture as well. Like that one scripture that every day I list, like, I, I go to. My favorite one is Matthew 6, Focus on him and his righteousness and all other things will be given unto you. So that keeps me on course. Because it's like, why am I looking left and right? Because me... I d everyone does it. We're on social media. We're comparing ourselves. Well, why they, I mean, my brand better than this. I don't know. <laughs> like, why they got, you know what I mean? How you getting this? And it's like, no, they're called to do what they're called to do. You're called to do what you're called to do. You can't get to the goal if you're looking left and right. You got to be looking forward. So, yeah, so that's my thing when I get low. So, what would you going to start with John because you're the only male <laughs> what advice would you give a woman who is allowing a man 
to steal her self worth con constantly? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is um, is evaluating the relationship. I have a I have an older sister, and I've just been blessed that we have just a, pr a pretty strong relationship. And she comes to me about relationship things, and so and I'm quick to just be like, "Hey, listen." <laughs> might not be it. I'm not going to lie. You know, like, and I have, and it, it forces me to evaluate how I treat women as well. Because I'd be like, dang, am I, do I be doing it? Dang, do I be saying it? Like, am I, you know, am I manipulative? Am I, you know, all of these things. And I think the biggest thing is to really evaluate the relationship. I know that's a big thing that, you know, women go to their homegirls and they say, like, oh, like, leave him. Like, you're like, well, I'm going to be single like you or whatever it is, you know. I know that, that happens a lot. And sometimes as a man, you can tell when, like, your significant other has been talking to her girlfriend. She come back with a vengeance. You be like, what? Who said that? Why not do that? I didn't say that. What? You can tell. I'll be like, yo, what is going on? So, um... You can, man, you can, you can tell. We can tell. Just so y'all know, we can tell. I'm like, no. Yes, pre no alone time there. You've been on the phone. That's why you told me you was going to call me back earlier. You was talking to her. I'm just trying to find out how to bring it up. How I need to bring it up. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> so um, I definitely say evaluate the relationship. I mean, I just feel like uh, a man... I really do just, I really do pray for, for men. I pray for our men, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. men be yes. lost, bro. Yes. yes. I'll be praying. For, I like, not yes. even like any particular Please. men, but just men, like in general. Like, I had a, 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 a conversation with one of my homeboys this past weekend about just like unfaithfulness and stuff. And I was like, and my biggest, I was like, when I talked to, I was like, bro, my, a lot of my stuff just about, comes down to my relationship with God. Like, when I, when I call God, when I, pray, I expect him to answer, and that's a reflection of his faithfulness. Yeah. So it's like, if I am a man, and I'm called to reflect God, then I'm also called to be faithful. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, like... <laughs> yeah, but so look at him, I think, I think we just have to, you have to evaluate, like, what this man can give you, and saying, like, okay, I'm not going to judge this man based on his potential. Mm. I'm going to judge him based on where he is right now. Right now. And I think when you put that in perspective... You can really judge, okay, am I going to move forward? Does this man love me as much as he says? Mm -hmm. Like, is, you know, is his actions lining up? Did, okay, I corrected him. Okay, I gave him another chance. Is he trying to change it? Mm -hmm. Because every situation in a relationship is not about making a decision once, oh, I just shut her up. It's about me making that decision over and over and over again. That's what changes yes. the traje trajectory of a relationship. Yeah. And so I would say just look for those things like, okay, you corrected him. Okay, is he, is he making that decision over and over again? Mm -hmm. You know, like evaluating a man where he is, mm -hmm. you know. And then you have to, as a woman, you have to have your own relationship with God. Like, I love women who be like, boy, I ain't dealing with this. Exactly. <laughs> boy, <laughs> boy, boy, this I, I love it. I love it. Women be like, boy, I'm going to talk to you later. You wild and like, you know what I'm saying? Or nah, like. And, and so seeing that as a woman, as this is a woman of God, does he see you that way? Does he see, does he see you the way God sees you? Because if I can, if, if, he, do, if he doesn't do that, like if you, you mm -hmm. can tell early on, we ignore the signs like we do. Mm -hmm. We all ignore signs. We all ignore red flags. But if you can uh, see that early on, like, and be like, oh, no, nah, he's he not the one. He's not it. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of things in relationships is preventive. Like if we can prevent it. Mm -hmm. Then I don't get too deep with his person. I already you know, slept with him. We done already did all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And now it's so hard for me to back out of it. Yeah. You, you said a lot. You said a lot. And what, when you said, does he see you how God sees you? First, you got to see you how God sees you. Um, it always starts with us because of the things that we are giving off. Because we attract different people. Because I know now I attract a completely different caliber of man than when I felt worthless. And... You know, sometimes people get it mistaken. They feel like they're going to only attract a certain caliber. No, some people just approach everybody. So <laughs> strength in numbers. So don't feel bad. Like, dang, what am wrong with me? Like, no, don't feel bad. But at the same time, understand what you are projecting or giving off. If you continuously attract the same type of person over and over and over, then there may be a problem. Not if it's like one every 10. Um, also, I think us as women have to be disciplined. And I think the biggest issue with 
allowing people to come into our life and just stomp on our hearts like Esau stomp on it. Like the issue, <laughs> the issue is we are constantly looking for instant gratification rather than lifelong things. We constantly looking to be for that temporary fix, but putting a, a, like longevity on it. Like, oh my God, like if I get this right now, if I get him right now, cause right now in this moment, he treats me this way. You won't know if he gonna treat you like that tomorrow if you don't give yourself time to get to know him. That's why I tell people, pace yourself in that relationship. Pace yourself, learn how to be disciplined. Cause sometimes I'm not gonna lie, like sometimes I do just wanna call the dude up and just be like, man, I'm trying to chill. Like I just wanna chill, but I can't because I know I'm dating for marriage. So if I'm calling the dude up because I just wanna chill, men box you in and you can never get it out. Like get out of that box, right? So if I call him as a chill buddy, that's all he gonna see me as. So if he doesn't see me as anything other than that, in that moment, he's never gonna move me out of that box. So I would rather just starve myself of that instant gratification in that moment because I don't even wanna go through that with you because I know what I want for me. But if it starts with you as a woman knowing what you want for yourself, you can't just be out here dating all willy nilly and thinking, oh, I'm gonna find me somebody eventually. What do you want? What, what do you want? What are you requiring? So last question is, um, what are, a few tips you would give for women to encourage their self-worth. If they're struggling right now, if they can't really get it, like what would you tell them to do? Spend time alone. Please. <laughs> spend time alone. And it's okay. It's okay to spend time alone. I struggled with being in a relationship from ninth grade till I was 25 years old, jumping from relationships to relationships. Do you know how toxic those relationships were? Right. Spend time alone. And in today's society, it's frowned upon if you wanna be single, if you wanna be celibate, no. Spend time to yourself. Get to know who you are. Anybody that's in a relationship and you don't know who you are, you setting yourself up for failure. Mm -hmm. And you're putting baggage, it's almost like if you have a sore. If you don't properly dress that sore, you leak on everybody that you touch. Yes. And that's not cool. She like, it, it's, I'm, I'm telling you, it's not cool. It is not cool. So just spend time alone. Stop requiring so much from a man when you're not even giving it to yourself. She's preaching a word. I'm telling you, like, before I moved, I'm telling you, my family's a witness. I was a wreck. I was a wreck. And I couldn't look in the mirror. How could you be in a relationship like that? Mm. Placing so much on him when he ain't got nothing to do with, nothing that I've been through. So why make him work for everything, every other guy, not even other guy. And I think sometimes we put too much on men and what they don't do and they're a dog and they didn't know. It's the true abuse is what you allow to yourself. You're abusing yourself. So the best advice I can give to any woman, any man, spend time alone. Build your relationship with Christ, because if your core is right, one thing, I'm talking, even working out, everything, one thing that everybody wants is a six pack. Mm -hmm. You want your stomach, if that Amen. waist and that stomach right, mm -hmm. you good. I've been meaning to ask Shinobi and, um, <laughs> and Pam, can I borrow your six packs for the weekend? I went to New Orleans this weekend, so I don't really got All right, I'll get hers this everything. weekend. Get I'm gonna get yours next weekend. All right, but cool, it's, it's one Keep thing going. that everybody wants, you want a six pack, but the beauty of a six pack is when your core is right. Mm -hmm. If my core is strong, you know how much I can do? I can push a truck. Mm -hmm. I can lift crazy pounds when your core is right. Build that relationship with Christ. Then move forward. God will bring you that boy ass. And you don't have to settle for his cousin. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> and I don't got to say them because it's like a, a church healthy event. So I don't got to right. say his cousin. Right. So just spend time alone and being okay with it. Like, me and my, my friends, they be moving from moving to moving to moving. And, and I can't judge because guess what? I was right along with them. Amen. Moving to moving to moving to moving. But when you take time alone, God will use you to be that answer to when they do have to come around. You can tell them, my best friend, I'll give her advice now. Like, you used to laugh at me about being alone and having God with, huh? Now I make you tell her, listen, be patient. Be patient. And the man that you attract, when he eventually comes, 
It, it'll be like, he worships the ground that you walk on. He admire you because that's how God look at you. And then you'll be starting to name like, yo, God sent you. I know he sent right. you. Right. <laughs> Where you been at all these years? Because I ain't never met no man right. like So, yeah, be patient. I agree with everything you both said. I swear, like, I went on a trip by myself this year for the first time. And I was just like, whoa, I am scared of this. But I had worked my way up to that by spending time alone. Like, I had to get to know Pam. Like, who are you? What do you want out of life? Like, do you want to just be, like, trying to, like, figure it out until you're 40 and then be like, well, dang, I done wasted all these years dating every dude and, like, letting them continuously continuing this cycle and getting myself hurt. And every time you hurt yourself, you're adding another little notch to your belt, you know, yeah. whether it's sex or not. You're adding another level of hurt, more pain, more pain. More, how much pain can one person endure? Mm. When do you wake up and say, you know what, I'm going to chill on this for a little while because there's something about me. You, you got to blame yourself, too. It's not always the other person. Like, you are attracting this because you are acting like you need this type of attention or you think you need someone. So I spent a lot of time alone, and my mom died in January, and I felt like God was like, that was your nightmare. That was my worst nightmare, losing my mom. And the fact that I've gotten through that this year, I'm still going through it, of course, but it's, it was just like, wow. If I can get taken through this and still survive, I don't, what am I putting so much into these men that don't value me and treat me like I can be disposed and they don't mind dating me and every other girl in town and they don't value me. So how can I continue to allow that around myself? I love myself more than that, you know? So. Spend time alone, get to know you. Within this time of being alone, I've learned things about myself I would have never known had I been clouding my mind with, where he at? He partying tonight, you ain't call me back. All this extra stuff we do all day long that is so unnecessary, because the right person is not gonna have you scrambling. You don't know where they're at because they're about you. you, you know? You're not gonna worry about these mundane things. So I've got to know myself. I learned things about myself. I picked up new good habits reading more, and I became so full of Pam, can't nobody come around me and be on no nonsense, no more. It's like I have a block up, like they are scared of it. I don't even have to say anything, it won't even come my way no more. And how quickly I shut it down, I'm amazing myself. Yes. I'm like, girl, you just, normally you would've let that slide, and <laughs> two years later you'd be hurting, and I'm like, wow, I'm not that girl anymore. I'm not letting things slide anymore. I'm, I value myself now. So I think it's spend time alone, Seek Christ, get your core together, and it all just comes together. And you don't seek a man, woman, he finds you. Yes. So we're out here doing the most, trying to get somebody to pay us attention. The right one's gonna come. Mm -hmm. When you get so full of you, it's attractive. Yeah. It is. It really it's is. So Ain't nothing more beautiful than a woman that's got it going on and she's cool with her. Yes. Like, Amen. you know what I mean? And vice versa. I like a man that's got his stuff together too, and they looking for every single girl that walks by. He is. Totally okay with reading his book. Every big booty girl in Atlanta that walks by, <laughs> he ain't got to take a glance. He's cool. He's focused, you know, and that's attractive. And I think that's a maturity level everybody needs to get to. We go through things and then you reach a level of maturity where you notice that I haven't been getting anywhere with how I've been doing things. So maybe I should switch it up and do something different. Where that means abstaining from sex until marriage, which I think is a great idea. Don't let this world rush you. We're watching the internet all day long and we're feeling rushed. You're rushed for marriage. You're rushed to have a baby. You're rushed for this. I'm going to have my babies when I feel like it, when God says so, and when I have my husband. You make your own rules. This is your life. She, she said a lot right there. She preached it. She preached it. Did you want to say anything or we covered it? Uh, Y'all yeah. really shut that down. Um, yeah, I think the, the boundaries are really, really big for me. Oh, yes. Boundaries. Like when you are in that that single space, setting boundaries um, in your relationships, boundaries in yourself of things you will and will not do um, as well. Like, because mm. like a lot of things in a relationship is like that discipline. If you don't ever set boundaries and yes. discipline yourself, it's hard to get in that relationship and build. Like, I tell a lot of guys that, you know, that want to be like, oh, I, you know, I, so many guys get into relationships, they've never even tried to be with one woman before. Mm. I said, well, <laughs> sir. <laughs> How you gonna do it now, King? How you gonna do it? You never did it when you were single. You never just dated this one girl when you were single. You was wow. talking to somebody else on the side, even then. Yeah. You know, so how you gonna do it now? People get to the marriage often and be like, all right, now I'm gonna do it. Nah, that's not it. So I think a big thing is that discipline. Um, spending, I love the spending time with yourself. That's really, really good. It's so important. 
Um, but a big thing is discipline and feeding yourself every day, feeding yourself the right things, um, listening to the right stuff. Like, you know, maybe if you fresh out that, you know, that relationship, maybe you don't need to turn on that Drake album. I don't know. <laughs> maybe you don't need to turn that thing on. Like, you'll hear the song later on. Like, you feel me? Like, it's just guarding your heart, right? When that, guarding your heart, feeding yourself the right stuff. That's, you know, that might be reading. That might be a sermon on YouTube. It might be whatever it is. So I think that was a really healthy habit. Yeah, you can always listen to um, Beyonce's Lemonade. One through about five. Just stop right at five. You, you can replay Don't Hurt Yourself about three to five times to really give you the confidence that you need to succeed. Um, yes, I love what everyone said. Um, the boundaries. Will Smith, I love his Instagram. It's so amazing. <laughs> it's so good. But he did something um, when he was talking about he loves himself too much. And I've adopted that. Like, I literally have self-talks with myself. Like, I'm like, self, you really want to do that? You love yourself too much to do that. Don't even do, don't even eat that chocolate cake. You love yourself too much. Don't go out. Because the last time you went, you ain't have fun. You didn't do, you're going to spend too much money. You love yourself too much to do that. So I think really having those self-talks and understanding how much you love yourself to do certain things. Understand also, you know, I know a lot of people probably listening to this, oh, be alone. You're like, oh, I ain't going to be alone. That's just too hard. Like, I tried that before. It is hard. I'm not going to lie to y'all. When I first committed to it, I literally had anxiety. Like, I would literally get anxiety attacks where I would have to go outside and walk my dog for long periods of time because I was going crazy. Like, I was sweating, I was shaking, I was crying because I'm like, why do I feel like this? That means that you, you are right where you need to be. That's exactly where you need to be. Because if you can't just be by yourself, you're going to look for everybody to fill you and make you complete. You're not supposed to look for anyone to complete you. Two wholes are supposed to come together as one, not two halves. That's what people get it mixed up. No, you're not. You're supposed to already be complete. Like, you want this person who's complete. You want this man. You want him to have a good job. You want him to have a six-pack. You want him to have not, his hairline not to be receding. You want him to be tall. You want all this. You want him not to have no baby mamas. You want him not to have nothing. You don't want him to have no ex-girlfriends. You don't want nothing. <laughs> but in the meantime, you coming in this thing, you still working on your career. You're about to get it started. You're still about to hit the gym and be consistent. You're still about to heal from that past relationship. How are you going to require that of somebody if that ain't you? Again, you attract where you are. So if you are not there, guess who you are not going to attract? That man who got that, um, you're going to get that man with the receding hairline. He's going to have six babies and five baby mamas. Like, that's what you're going to get. So that is it for tonight. But before we go, John is going to bless us. He gonna bless us with poem, with a poem. You wanna get the good mic? Yeah, let me back up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting over here thinking about, oh yeah, that's a good, that's like that, oh, that's good. Huh? No, nah, I'm good. Oh yeah, I'm good. Um, I'm sitting here thinking about what I wanted to do. Um, I think I know. Uh, so one, one thing that I think is consistent about what we were talking about, just finding your self-worth and that the fact that God defines that, right? I believe that there's truth and there's facts, right? And so, like, facts present themselves in different types of ways, and, um, but the truth stands. And so, like, the truth about who we are remains the same, even though the facts may present different things where we are in our life. And so when we believe the truth, we can get past those facts. So I think a lot of that truth is just uh, about joy, like where our joy comes from. And I think a lot of self-worth is tied to just joy. Like you can't steal that from me. And in relationships, I think it's a lot of times it's, it's happiness based, like I'm happy right now. And then, but when that person leaves, when the pocket's empty, when the car not there, whenever it is, then I don't know, I don't, I'm not happy anymore. And so um, I think a big thing is tying our self-worth is the joy, that joy piece of who God has called us to be. And so I'm going to do this poem. It's called This Joy. And um, 
Yeah, I'm going to get off of him. When you get dressed in the morning, do you pick your clothes based on how you look on the outside or how you feel on the inside? Or like me, you just put on whatever's clean? Nah, but that's not the question. Have you ever put a costume of happiness on a body of shame? Place the hat on a head of sorrow. Have you ever put makeup on a face that wasn't quite dry from the night before? Or have you ever put on a watch that gave you time, but you couldn't lose it? Fasten up a belt that still hasn't allowed you to prove it. Have you ever tied up sneakers that still haven't encouraged you to just do it? Because sometimes our happy endings come before we left the house that day. Focused on these dirty rags, fake tags. But lately, I've been searching for a joy I've never had. And on those mornings, after we tried to dress it up and make it real for our futures, if we listen, the smallest inkling of hope will ask us this great question. He will say, son, baby girl, who even told you that you were naked? Because even I wish that laughter came as often as pain that sunshine affected my mood just as much as the rain. I have a question for the heavens. Does the sun ever get upset at how uneasy the clouds make us about our plans, ambivalent at how much more slippery the water will make our hands? Does it ever anger him that on rainy days the world will slow down even just for a moment to ponder on if everything on our agenda that day is even worth the hassle? Or will we much rather be doing something more meaningful? more peaceful. I have faith in him. I would bet that the sun doesn't get jealous of the clouds, but instead finds peace in the fact that God allowed him to kiss us, to lift us, to put us in his gravity and never attempt to dismiss us. I wish that we could be as grateful as the sun because I remember when happiness would await me at the entrance of restaurants wishing I had more bubble gum that my mouth could chew, enough friends to take over the world. How could we pretend to be X-Men when it's just us two dreaming of turning our wheels like Pinky in the brain? I remember wishing I had five more minutes at Ben Hill. It seemed like I had so much more to do or wishing I could run faster from bullies. Even respect seemed to be the only thing I had to lose. I wish that happiness was enough. But like those clothes, you tend to outgrow it. Like a couple more pounds, it begins to weigh you down. And at first, you will be the only one to notice. So you spend countless hours in the mirror trying to get your soul to remember what you look like naked. But its memory has left you, left with your peace. Now all you have left is pieces. So you go looking for that size that's bigger. You know what I'm talking about, that temporal fixer, oftentimes getting so caught up in the loudness of our desires that we lose the truth in the whisper because living with happiness and no joy is like carrying the finest wallet and having no money to put in it. Going broke off an emotion that was never meant to keep you full so you go to sleep on an empty stomach. And Lord knows that I've fallen asleep with a smile on my face and waking up to tears. Lord knows that I try to play this game of life without my joystick. I've done it for years. Lord knows that sometimes a smile is just a crying face that wasn't brave enough to make an appearance until someone asks if you're okay. You felt like you had to hide it because your outfit was too nice that day. Too afraid if you had to wear your pain like your skin tone, they would look at you that way. Thank goodness that you practiced. But Joy, when I was a child, they would tell me to jump for you. But I'm still learning how to do it when my feet get weary. Joy, are you still where Lauren left you? Because if Zion was a mile away, I would pack up my bags and leave this world behind. Joy, sometimes I can feel you bud out of the shame of my skin. You are the fruit of my spirit that no woman has ever tasted. So I want to take this time out to thank God for giving me something that the world did not give to me. Something they could never take away. Thank you, God, for warming up my heart when I was too cold to take a deep breath. Thank you, God, for dialing up joy and putting it in my bed when I thought that sorrow was the only thing that knew my sleep number. Thank you, God for taking my emotions to the park because sometimes they just needed some fresh air and a new outlook. Joy, you have delivered me from the things we buy to cover up what's inside. Joy, 
I have waited on you like John did Jesus because men will need you when they become brave enough to walk on water joy. I will find comfort in you like broken hearts on sunken pillows because I know that you will be there to wake me up in the morning joy. I love the way you dance in the echoes of my praise. And I wish, no, I thank you for remaining the same way from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Thank you. Get a preach, yes. Yes, encore. <laughs> All right, so you guys know where to follow me, and if you don't, it's on the back of those little cards. It's at Single Woman Chronicles. I do have merchandise. You guys can come over and get my book, How to X Your Ex, A Guide Towards Getting Past Unhealthy Relationships, and Single Woman Chronicles, an Atlanta love story, kinda. And also, I have my Work This shirts over there for sale as well, so once uh, we wrap up, you guys can go over there and check it out. But everyone here, let us know where we can follow you, where we can get your merchandise, and yeah, everything. Yeah, okay, I'll go first. Um, you can find me on social media at Poet John Wood on Instagram and Twitter. Um, my website is poetjohnwood.com. I have merchandise on there as well, dope shirts and all that good stuff. So, yeah. So, on social media, I am Shinobi Morgan MS, S H O N O B E. My parents tried to be unique. <laughs> Shinobi Morgan MS on Facebook, Instagram, and ShinobiMorganMS.com to purchase my book. I am the evidence. Um, everything for me is at Pamela the Beauty. T-H-E, not D-A. Okay? And the beauty. And she's a personal trainer. If you're looking at her body, uh, you can kind of tell. But yes, she is. So I hope you guys enjoyed tonight. Have a lovely evening.